Alberta's Wood Buffalo region. One of the largest freshwater deltas in the world is here, and the northern boreal forest is home to a diverse wildlife population. Some of North America's first indigenous peoples made this vast region their home, and their descendants still live here today. It is also here that one million barrels of oil are produced every day, extracted from the Alberta tar sands, the largest concentration of hydrocarbon in the world. It is against this backdrop that Aco Electric embarked on the Dover Whitefish Transmission Line project, Alberta's largest and most challenging transmission project in decades. 350 kilometers of transmission line was constructed, three new substations were built, and an existing substation was expanded. It's a project that was done in record-setting time and on budget. And it's a project that benefited the oil sands industry, Aboriginal people, and Alberta electricity consumers, all the while protecting the complex ecological system in the Wood Buffalo region. The aim of the Dover Whitefish Project was to create a transmission line that increased transmission capacity to Alberta's oil sands. It would also carry excess energy from the oil sands cogeneration plants to the provincial capital of Edmonton. And finally, it would increase electric service in the region south of the oil sands area. Typically a project like that would have taken uh, anywhere from a year and a half to two years to do. In August 2004, a mere 10 months after the start of construction, the transmission project was complete. It was really amazing what they accomplished in such a short period. And the key thing here was they were within their budget. When ADCO Electric energized its Dover Whitefish transmission line with 600 megawatts, it nearly doubled the electric system capacity between Edmonton and Fort McMurray. But there are several key areas that set this project apart. Eight different Aboriginal groups live along the transmission line route. It's an area they've called home for thousands of years. Given the high regard elders have in the community, ATCO Electric made it a priority to include them in the consultation process from the beginning. Early on in the project, we spent a lot of time with the elders and consulted with them around right-of-ways, making sure that we weren't crossing any sensitive uh, lands for them. With the advice of the elders in mind, line construction was rerouted in some areas to protect culturally sensitive land. Another key component to the successful Aboriginal partnerships involved establishing a vital link between the Aboriginal chiefs and the vice president of ATCO Electric. They wanted to deal with the real decision maker and that's one thing that we set up in this project is that they, could, they would have direct link to the real decision maker, uh, so speaking, as, as chief to chief. We are not individuals who like to work over the telephone and make uh, deals over the telephone, so uh, it was nice to have a company such as ATCO to come out and meet with us, uh, especially uh, them coming out to meet with us with the vice president made us feel comfortable. Uh, a lot of times uh, when we do have issues with industry, uh, they do only send out their technicians, but at this time, when our issues were of a concern, they sent out uh, one of their highest-ranking uh, representatives. ATCO's commitment to Aboriginal communities goes beyond consultation, though. Maximizing business opportunities for the Aboriginal groups in the area was also a priority. As a result, almost all the clearing and brushing work was completed by First Nations contractors or their partners. You got to commend ATCO for, for uh, hiring or trying to uh, uh, involve uh, uh, First Nations uh, coordinators in, the, in this kind of project. It says a lot for, for, for the company. It's nice to be out here. Thanks for uh, ATCO, I, I got a job. <laughs> Working in conjunction with the Aboriginal communities was a key component to the Dover Whitefish project, and it was a component that all sides benefited from. Aboriginal participants were left with marketable skills, and ATCO Electric was left with an Aboriginal partnership model for future projects. ATCO Electric prides itself on going beyond the call of duty and doing more than others expect. This is certainly the case when it comes to environmental protection measures on the Dover Whitefish Project. From ATCO Electric's point of view, the environment is very important for us. We want to try to protect it as much as we can. Minimizing environmental impact played a large role in planning the route for the transmission line. Our routing was uh, along existing 
corridors as much as possible, and indeed almost exclusively on this project, uh, so that we would reduce the impacts of opening up new access. Reducing impact was also a reason for limiting construction to one winter season. Much of the land for the transmission line right-of-way consists of muskeg, a fragile peat bog. This muskeg is crucial to the local ecosystem. An abundance of plants thrive in the soggy, acidic soil, and it's also important habitat for two endangered species, the woodland caribou and the whooping crane. In order to minimize the environmental impact, it was clear that construction would have to be done when the ground was frozen. This meant the line portion of the project had to be completed in just four months, and freezing cold conditions for the workers would be the norm. But environmental considerations didn't stop there. As the clearing was done, fur bearer houses were created by placing wood debris piles along the transmission line. These houses along the right-of-way were intended for some of the habitat that may have been disturbed during the project. A caribou protection plan was developed to minimize construction activity and its impact on sensitive habitat areas. And screw anchor piles were the primary foundation type used because they can be installed with minimal ground disturbance. Atco Electric made a conscious decision to go beyond the standard environmental protection measures with the Dover Whitefish project. And those standards will continue with all future projects. The $99 million Dover Whitefish project created benefits for many and set new standards, but there were other notable achievements as well. The planning and execution of such a large project in such a short period of time set new industry standards. Steel pole construction will now be used for all transmission line projects in isolated areas because of its durability and reliability. And screw anchor piles will be used as often as possible because they are a smarter choice environmentally. But the Dover Whitefish project is not only a benefit to Atco Electric and the oil sands industry, it's a project that all Alberta consumers will benefit from. By harnessing the excess energy produced at cogeneration plants in the oil sands, Albertans now have access to cheaper electricity. Atco Electric, proud supplier of safe, reliable electricity to Albertans for over 75 years.